Welcome everyone. Happy Fedora 35 release. And you don't see me for some reason. My video is not active. It's all blacked out, but I'm raising both my hands and I'm very happy for the 35 release party. <laughs> I'm Vipul. I'm here with Akash, Deep and David and all of us work in community platform engineering team. Uh, if you have been around like devil list, infrastructure list, you would have heard of this team. We work on a uh, bunch of different infrastructure, Fedora, CentOS, religion engineering side, but one of our major responsibilities is taking care of the federal infrastructure. And this very short talk is about some of the steps we are going to take and we have been taking to improve metrics and monitoring of our applications. And of course, the infrastructure they run on as well. So Akashdeep and David, you want to just say hi? Hello. Hi, folks. Hello. There you go. So uh, yeah. Uh, as of now, we have Nagios to monitor our hosts and some basic monitoring of application running on them. Uh, let's say if Pagior is running on one of the hosts and it crashes, then we get notifications for that. But there is no, uh, for a while, we have been feeling a need for a newer and slightly updated monitoring stack. There's no neat way to monitor what's happening within the application, but just the state of application if they're running or not, and slightly more complicated things you can achieve by passing script on the host, which is not a super ideal way. You cannot just run a query and filter down, down the metrics to the point. And again, and you can't do any of the things when it comes to OpenShift applications. So as we are trying our best to move as many applications as possible to OpenShift container platform for our easier administration, we feel the need of something new solution even more. And to, ta to tackle this, we uh, in CPA team, there's a sub team called ARC, which before any initiative is taken care of, these team members, or two, three people who are assigned to it, they take the task and they try to find a feasible solution to it. And our team in CPE came up with two solutions replacing Nagios. And the answers came out to be Zabbix and Prometheus. Uh, Zabbix, because we have already been using it in CentOS infrastructure and we are quite happy with it. It has all the features we need to monitor different hosts and infrastructures. And Prometheus kind of came as default solution on OCP4. And upon investigating it, we loved it and satisfied all that that we are looking for. So again, Zabbix for your VMs, bare metals, and just hosts. And Prometheus can be used for applications, which it turns out to be a very good application in our research. And Prometheus can also integrate with Zabbix, where you can export metrics and see all in one place. So. In last couple of months, uh, we installed a new OpenShift container platform version 4.x. Right now, I guess it's version 4.8. It's moving quite fast. And we have had OpenShift uh, versions in Fedora where a bunch of applications run, but it was 3.11, if I'm not wrong, and quite old. It's been a long due that we needed to update it. So we installed OpenShift container platform 4, both staging and production. And in the end, I'll share this slide. It has links to those both clusters. And anyone can go there and log in right now using your FAST ID, uh, which means it's ready to be tested upon. But all uh, when you access it directly, you won't have any access right there. So we are working on how to provide some of this access. We'll come to that. So we do, again, uh, Prometheus is the best option. Uh, I like this uh, line. The Prometheus is the best option for monitoring applications running inside OpenShift. And 100% of our sample size agreed with it. Three out of three devs working on the project thought Prometheus was the best solution. And uh, again, it comes with OpenShift uh, by default. So it's an integral part of OpenShift for we always knew that there would be support of it as long as OpenShift support would last. And it comes with three main components uh, in the monitoring stack, Prometheus, Alert Manager, and Grafana. Prometheus is, it also has a web end, but we are not talking about that. Prometheus would be mainly for collecting your metrics from the applications that you define and Grafana to display it. It's a in a very nice, beautiful graph um, dashboard, an alert manager to customize your alerts, how you receive it. Like Unlike Nagios, if you're part of sysadmin group, you know how many emails you get. And there's very little customization on what you receive and what you not receive user specific. Uh, in alert managers, uh, namespace admins, which is application admins, can configure those things. But the problem is, by default, uh, Prometheus, alert man manager, and Grafana, they, come, they are accessible only to cluster admins. And, the reason they are, they're mainly there to monitor state of your OpenShift cluster, not for applications within. 
but we found user workload monitoring configuration, which allows every namespace admins and project owners to use this feature. So we configured it and every app owner, when you have a namespace in there where you run your application, you will be able to extend metrics like Prometheus to monitor your metrics there, uh, your application's metrics there. But the, as I said, the only thing that needs to be sorted out is role-based access control on who has access to the namespace admin. We want it to be well integrated with FAST so that we don't have to add users and remove users at multiple places. This is in work. It's already been configured to quite some extent, but we are still just doing some polishing work in this. And once this is done, every namespace admin can add and remove users on who have access to the application and uh, monitoring and metric stacks by themselves. So it's a very self-service thing, and you don't need to depend on federal infrastructure folks, which is always very welcoming. So this was the introduction of what I wanted to say, just a little bit of primer before we move into slides, very small demo of what we have done, uh, which I'll leave it to David. So David, do you want to share your screen? I'll stop sharing here. OK, OK. Uh, can you hear me, yeah? Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Just share good screen, good. We'll good to go. OK, let me try share. This. See, just this and part. meanwhile, I'll add the slides on uh, in chat there, and I'll upload it on Fedrock people account. Okay, let me know when the uh, when the OpenShift um, dashboard can be visible. Uh, I can see it. Uh, so visible. Maybe, you wanna... Yes, I can see. It. Uh, I said it's visible at my end. Oh, okay. Uh, Okay, so um, th this is the, the OpenShift 4 dashboard. Um, so we're after creating a, a sample project that has a couple of uh, Prometheus rules configured. So th this is just an example to show what it would look like when uh, a custom application, for example, or an existing uh, Fedora app has been migrated and to the new cluster and is then configured to use the, the user workload monitoring stack. So I'll just jump in here, this monitoring example. So you can see the work, the, let's just look at the pods that are inside it here. So there's a single container running. And let me just show you, if we jump onto that container, uh, hold on, sorry, one second. It's got a, a service, so let's go to networking. You can see that it has a single service running. And okay, so the, the new things that we need to add here uh, to get Prometheus to scrape the service is a, a service monitor. So we'll go up here and search for service monitors. Okay, so you can see we, we have a, a service monitor object. So this is all self-service. So the, the administrator of the app can basically create one of these objects. And I'll give you a quick look, of, look at what it actually looks like. You can see it just says to uh, scrape the app that matches a particular label. It uses like HTTP and there's pretty much the port. So Prometheus, um, it always expects to scrape the slash metrics endpoint on that service. So basically by creating the service monitor, uh, Prometheus will automatically uh, scrape the metrics endpoint every 30 seconds. You can see here in the interval. Okay, so um, let me just show you a quick example of the of the data that gets returned by this uh, endpoint. So in this example, like it's um, it's just querying like the price of Bitcoin and you know Ethereum, and it's it's been returned here. So this is a, a PromQL basically, or, or the language that Prometheus um, understands. So when, when you're creating your metrics, you just need to follow like the the Prometheus guides to, to uh, so you can produce data in this correct format that uh, Prometheus will understand. Okay, so every 30 seconds, uh, Prometheus is scraping this data. And the next thing we can do is we can set um, alerting rules. So you can create a Prometheus rule. I've got one here already. 
this Prometheus rule, uh, it's it's pretty easy to read once you see it. So it's called uh, Bitcoin over 100,000. So you can check that if this metric returns data and the value is over 100,000 for five minutes, well then create a warning level event. Uh, so what we can do is, I don't think Bitcoin is over 100,000. So let's put it at 5,000 because it's definitely higher than 5,000 at the moment. We'll just save that. Um, now we can check back later, but uh, look, as we move on now, uh, th that's the actual rules. So you'll have alert manager will be continually looking at the data. Is this alert firing? Is this alert firing? And if it is, then you can configure it to like maybe send an email to the app owners. So we can configure all that type of stuff in Fedora Infra as well. So we could have like a custom uh, mailing list that's like unique to the particular app. So then we can set up alerts that only the the app owners get. So that's that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the monitoring stack. Then what it actually looks up like or looks like. So in here you would actually see any alerts that are firing, and you can see there's a couple already. These are <laughs> alerts that are actually firing right now. Uh, and if we if we waited about five minutes, you'd probably see that the um, the the Bitcoin alert would fire. Yes, yeah, so that's pretty much the demo. Uh, will we stop there and see? Does anyone want to ask questions, or will we move on to the last uh, area? Yeah, let's move on to the last part, and then we can come to some of the discussions and how folks can start utilizing this. Okay, okay. So Akashdeep, do you want to share your slide or do you want me to just do the last slide share for you? Yeah, please share this last slide for me. Okay. All yours. Thank you. And thanks David for a demonstration. All right, so uh, what are the next step forward for the developers? The customer corresponds to Noggin IPA for authentication authorization. So you can log into the cluster via your federal accounts. The infrastructure release engineering team will work on migrating the existing applications from the older OSP4 cluster to the newer one. One can help us with the existing running applications with uh, reworking their OpenShift applications playbook to fall in line with the newer cluster and to make a PR against our federal Ansible, uh, federal infrastructure sensible repository, the link of which I will provide over here. There you go. And by finding metrics to add uh, to the Prometheus monitoring for your own applications. And how exactly that can be done? The link to it is over here. Right. Uh, so, okay, so where, okay, okay, I see the link, sorry. Yeah, in the chat section. So down the line, uh, Zabbix would replace Nagios entirely for monitoring the infrastructure and uh, OpenShift monitoring integrate pretty well with Zabbix. And that's pretty much it from our side. And folks, please feel free to use the Q&A section for all your questions. Well, I guess the uh, Whipple, oh, you're back. Never mind. Yeah, I realized I was sharing my video, but it was not visible. It's all just blacked out. So. Yeah, thank you, folks. That's all we wanted to share of what we did for the last couple of months and how you can start utilizing it. Very soon, you'll see emails on how developers of different applications and maintainers can come and start utilizing this metric stack. As of now, things are in place. We are just figuring out some of the connecting the plumbing pieces of how, from Fedora side of things, how who is going to get access to these different namespaces and what's the right way to do it. Uh, if you go to uh, Ansible repository in Fedora Infra uh, on Pagure, you'll see OpenShift apps. That's where all the applications live. And there may be some small tweaks because there are some APIs and the general workflow from OpenShift 3 to OpenShift 4. OpenShift Container Platform 4 has changed a little bit. So if you want to make sure we do it in the right manner, uh, obviously expect more communication from our side, more blogs and guides on how to do this. And as Akashdeep shared, infrastructure and uh, Infra and relevant infrastructure and release engineering team. Sorry, I, do, I forgot my team name. 
uh, will already work on migrating some of these applications. So they'll have a proper guide for someone who wants to help or someone who just wants to follow these things along. That's all from our side. If you have any questions, we'll answer them now and uh, we can discuss. Feel free to even jump on the call and if you want to discuss something, more than welcome for that. So which OCP for minor version are we using here? Sydney, we are using, I think, the latest version. Uh, we update it quite frequently. Uh, we still have to come up with a great cadence on when we are going to update these things. We are hoping to update every month. Right now, we are just updating as soon as they release. Uh, so I guess right now is 4.8 dot something. But yeah, 4.8 is what we are using right now. And we update every small stable versions. Yeah, and thanks, David, for sharing it in the chat. 4.9 has gone, so there you go. We have one more task of updating it. <laughs> and that will be done. Uh, thankfully, OpenShift upgrade process is quite easy and stable. That's nice. Uh, one good thing is that we are using OpenShift container storage for our storage solutions. Um, it helps a lot in taking care of self-service things when it comes to storage. But OCS talk would be a totally different, entirely different. If you want to listen to us talking about OCS, how and why we love it, we would love to talk to you all later on. That's all. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I hope we were able to share some good things here. Reach out to us if you have any questions or suggestions for us to moving forward. And we are looking forward to it. Bye.